Uh, no, it's not on the website. <laughs> Hello, everybody on Clubhouse. You're welcome. Uh, if you can hear me, please. Can you hear me on, on Clubhouse? Hi, yeah, everybody. Bit okay, so we're on live. We're we are streaming now on the internet. Welcome on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and on YouTube. You're welcome to the Right to Be Head Masterclass by Dr. Michelle McKinney Hammer. Thank you for joining us today. It's going to be an amazing session. Let me know where you're let me know where you are. Send it in from please put it in the chat. You know how we do this. Put it in the chat. Let me know where you are coming in from. It is 9 p.m. in Ghana, West Africa, and we've had a fairly good weather today. Yesterday it rained all day, and I'm sure the sun that refused to shine yesterday decided to come out today. So you're mm -hmm. welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tell us why you're logging on from on Facebook, on, on Twitter, and on YouTube. I am trying to coordinate all of this as I am. There's a lot of feedback, Kega, on your end. Once again, on my end, there's a lot of feedback on my end. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me unfeed. Right. Okay. Has it ended? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, on Facebook, we have New York joining us. In the Zoom room, we have Florida, we have Orange County, California, we have Arkansas, we have Chicago, we have Southern California, we have the UK. Thank you guys for joining us today. It's going to be an amazing session. Uh, like you know, the Right to Be Heard Masterclass is the latest masterclass in the collection of classes in the MMH Academy. Uh, we've done Diva the Diva Principal Masterclass, we've done the Love Masterclass, we've done, what other masterclass have we done? We've done the book clubs, and now we are on to Writers Masterclass. The MMH Academy is a division of MMH Ministries where um, Dr. Michelle Hammond is dedicated and committed to teaching and growing you in different areas of your life. Um, hence the Right to Be Head Masterclass for authors, specifically for authors. This is a specific masterclass to help you today before we go on i just want to play an ad quickly for you and then we would proceed with our event of the day have you always wanted to write a book but just didn't know how to get started or perhaps you started but you haven't finished you've gotten lost in the process well, I'm Dr. Michelle McKinney Hammond, best-selling author, and I want to help you become a best-selling author, too. I'm here to share keys with you on the purpose, the plan, the process, and all you need to know about publishing. The Right to Be Heard Masterclass is finally here. Let's do this. And you okay, always to write a book. there we just have it. The how. Right to Be Heard Masterclass is finally here, and we are about to do this. Before I bring on Dr. Michelle, I just want to give a quick intro about who she is. If you've never heard of who Dr. Michelle McKinney Hammond is, she is a best selling author of over 42 books that have sold over 2 million copies worldwide, and they are still selling till today. The other day, I walked in. I walked into her office and she's like, you know what? I just did a tally of all the numbers of books I've sold because spoiler alert or dun -dun, we're trying to publish another book or trying to get out there. She's like, man, I've sold a lot of books in my life. I'm like, you're right, girl. You've sold so many books. Give yourself a high five. And uh, so she's the author of all 42 books selling over 2 million copies worldwide. She's an Emmy Award winning television co-host. She's a singer. She's an actress. Right now, she's about to be on three different series in Ghana, West Africa. She's a life coach. She's a fashion designer. What else are you? Are you? She's a lot of things. But Mommy to puppies. To she's a mommy to puppies and a grandma to puppies too as well. So, <laughs> uh, But for the reason why we're here today, she is, like I said, the best-selling author and I am going to stop talking because you did not come here to see me. You came here to hear from the beautiful, the one and only delectable Dr. Michelle McKinney Hammond. I am going to hand it over to her. To delectable? This class. <laughs> 
It's good to have a fan in your corner. You know that everyone needs a cheerleader, right? Hi, everyone. I am so glad that you decided to join me tonight. I can't tell you how excited I am about this class. And I have to tell you that many of my friends have been on my case to do this class for many, many years. But I finally got the nudge from the Holy Spirit that now was the time. I think that we have entered a new era of people wanting more information. You know, it says in the last days that we would be great learners and scholars and that we would be acquiring a lot of information. And um, I think that a lot of people are in that space where they want to learn more. And they also have their own stories that they want to tell, experiences that they've had that they feel will be beneficial to others to learn from. And that is really an important point when we're writing a book. I always say that writing a book is not a job. It is a calling. And, and you'll understand that when you start to write your book, that is definitely something that you need to be called to. It requires a special grace to start, but it requires a greater grace to finish. I can tell you a little bit of my own story that I had a background in advertising. And all of you probably don't know that about me, but I worked for Burrell Communications, which is the largest African-American advertising agency in the country in the US and I wrote copy and I was an art director. I was hired as an art director first, actually. I did not study writing in school per se, although writing was my favorite class. I studied graphic design. I was gonna be an art director. And um, one day I didn't have my writer present and there was time for a presentation for a Coca-Cola commercial. I worked on Ford. Um, Schlitz malt liquor, legs, pantyhose, Johnson products, Crest toothpaste, you name the big clients, I worked on them. And um, one day I couldn't find my writer. So I took a stab at writing the script myself. And my boss said, oh, you're a writer. I said, no, I'm not a writer. I'm an art director. She said, no, you are a writer. I'm taking away your writer. You'll write your own scripts from now on. Well, at the time, I felt she was taking advantage of me and wanted me to do more work for no more money. And I was very upset about it, but it was a God thing because that was the beginning of my training for writing books. I just didn't know it yet. So if you think back in your own life, there's that moment where you started writing, where you started dreaming of what you wanted to write, or you wrote poetry, or you wrote songs, or you, you wrote a lot and you read a lot. And you did not know that you were actually in training for this moment at this point in time where it's time for you to now birth all the things that have been churning inside of your heart to bless someone else and transform someone else's life. I'm going to tell you that that has to be the best part about writing a book. When someone reads it and says, that really helped me or that book changed my life. Well, I got to tell you that I was in advertising and I was caught up in the glamorous world of advertising for several years, but I was also struggling as a, sing a Christian single. And uh, I was going back and forth and up and down with my mentor, Bunny Wilson. Um, if you've ever read any of her books, she wrote Liberated Through Submission. She wrote Betrayal's Baby. She wrote Night in Shining Armor. Um, and she was a great influence in my life as I watched her write all these books and still didn't have a clue that one day I was going to write my own. And as I struggled with my single existence as a Christian and finally got some revelations that just set me free and made me feel powerful in my existence as a single person, and I was sharing them very excitedly with her, she said, you need to write a book about that. And I said, Bunny, I can't write a book. I'm in advertising, 30 seconds is all I've got. I've got to tell a story in 30 seconds. She said, as much as you like to talk, you can write a book, it's just one long conversation. And indeed it is. And so 43 conversations later, here I am talking to you, helping you form your conversations that are gonna change and rearrange someone's mind and therefore change their life. That's the point. That's the goal when we write a book. A lot of people approach me and say, I want to write a book. And I go, 
well, why do you want to write a book? Well, you know, this happened to me and that happened to me. And it's got to be about more than what happened to you. What is the point of what happened to you? Have you learned the lesson? Now, I'm going to back up and tell you that sometimes you learn the lesson through the writing. You might not have figured it all out as you start the book. You just know that you've got an urgency to share a message that's going to help somebody. And in the process, you also help yourself. It's been said that the teacher becomes the student. Let me say that again. The teacher becomes the student. As you begin to write, not only are you going to make discoveries for others to discover, you're going to discover things yourself. You're going to get new revelations because now you've got to dig deeper to perfect that message to deliver to someone else. So I started writing a book that I called Ladies in Waiting. You know that book as What to Do Until Love Find You, if you are familiar with any of my writings. So that lets you know right there that some changes occurred between the time I started dreaming of writing a book and when the book was actually birthed. Good books don't just happen, okay? Uh, you don't just sit down and everything just flows out and that's it. No, no, no. And that's why I'm here to guide you through the process, to take all those dreams and all those thoughts and make them make sense, not just to you, but to those that are going to read them. Um, it, it's a process. And, and so as I do this course, you are going to learn about the purpose, the plan, and the process of writing. And I'm going to be so excited to walk through that with you because guess what? I didn't have anybody to walk through it with me. And so I just wrote and wrote and wrote and had to learn a lot of things the hard way. And so I'm going to make that process easier for you by giving you the things to think about, the way to focus. This is one of the things I've heard a lot. I've always wanted to write a book, but I don't know how to get started. If that's you, can you raise your hand on screen or tell me in the chat? That's me. I've always wanted to write a book, but I haven't known how to get started. Yes, a lot of people are there. A lot of people are there. The other thing is I've started writing my book, but I've gotten stuck. That might be you. Let me see your hands if that's you or tell me in the chat. Yes, that's me. I've gotten stuck. I've written down my little notes, but that's as far as I've gotten. Yes. So that's the other thing. There's a process and things that you can put in place to help you not be stuck. You know why? Because you're going to know your why for writing your book. And your why is going to be the catalyst for you, not just starting, but finishing your book. And I'm going to help you do a clear outline so that you are strategically following through with writing your book. I am so excited. All, that's all I can say is I am so excited because the things that I've been able to share, you know, I've been able to share like a little piece with one person, a little piece with another person, but now I'm going to have a class and we're going to do amazing things together in that class. Let me tell you what we're going to do in the class. First of all, there's going to be a weekly lesson because I know that everybody's busy and some of my other classes, there's a lesson every day that requires great dedication. But in this class, you're going to have a class once a week and it is taped so you can watch it at your own leisure and do the work, the workbook assignment. Yes, there is homework every week. Why? Because I want to help you get started with the process. I want to hear what you're doing. I am going to be able to critique what you're doing. And you're going to be in a class that's going to nurture you and also give you feedback. So it's going to be very in interactive because every other week, every two weeks after you've done your homework, we're going to meet live and go over your homework. Yes. I've always wanted to be a teacher. Now I get to be a teacher in this way. Let me see your homework. No, you can't flunk the class, but you can actually really finish and get your dream birth because you've got guidance. You've got a cheering section and you've got me there to mentor you through the process. These were things I did not have. So what happened was I just wrote. I was so happy. I was just writing and writing. And then it got handed over to an editor and the editor said, uh, girlfriend, 
you need some structure. You need this. You need that. I was like, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know, you know. So you're not going to look like that to your editor. You're going to have a tight manuscript because I'm going to give you all those keys and processes and strategies that are going to help you complete your book and complete it well. Okay. So I just want you to know that this class has been designed to really champion you to getting to your book. Now, I'm going to tell you, after I learned everything the hard way, I do have a success story. And that success story is that first book, after it was retitled by my publisher, uh, and I do talk about contracts and all of that. One of the smart things that had been put in my contract was that I have to have the last say on everything before it gets out. I like I have to like my cover. I have to like my title. Okay, so people can't just run over me and tell me this is what you're going to do, right? It's going to be authentically me when it comes out. But the book went through a transition of titles until we landed at that title. And that was when I learned my greatest, uh, one of my greatest lessons was the thing that's going to compel people to read your book is that title and that cover. You just don't know how important, almost more important than the contents. Okay, I mean, you could have a blank book inside. If you've got the right title, people will buy it. There's actually a book like that. There's something like, uh, something about relationships. I can't remember right now. When you open it, the whole thing is blank. Oh, what men know about women or something like that. And, and everybody wants to say, oh, what do they know? And you open it and the whole thing is blank. It's a joke, but <laughs> it gets people every time. So my book ended up being What to Do Until Love Finds You. And um, wow, that said it all. It told, the buyer, it told the buyer of the book what they were going to get right out the gate. It was going to answer a question, what to do until love finds you. So that book sold out of its first printing of 12,000 copies in three weeks. The publisher was shocked, didn't know what had happened. It had no forewords, it had no endorsements. I was an unknown author. And uh, I called to order a box of books because I had been invited to speak somewhere. And they told me, we don't have any books. Your books have sold out. The guy was running around in the warehouse. He wasn't anticipating it, hadn't prepared for it. So they just had to order new prints and the bookshops are all calling. And you know, now you might say, why did that happen, Michelle? I think it happened because I pushed a button. I wrote, out, I wrote that book out of my own need because I was struggling as a Christian single. And when I went to the bookstores, there were two books on the shelf for singles and both of them made me feel like I wasn't saved. They didn't address the realistic issues that I was dealing with at the time, the wrestling matches that I was having with my flesh, um, the guidance that I needed to know about what to do on a date. It, they, they were very lofty and very spiritual and not practicable not practical and not applicable to me. And so I wrote the book that I wanted someone to write for me, which meant that I got real, I was authentic, I was transparent, I shared my experiences. And so my readers became my friends. And that's actually one of the signatures that um, I've been able to have in my writing career is that when I meet people, they think I'm their friend because they said the way you write, I just feel like I just know you, you know. And so we're going to get into the tone of writing. We're going to get into how to connect with your audience. We're going to get into how to keep them reading from page one all the way to the end of your book. We're going to talk about all those types of things because they, those are the things that build up a following and build your, your career as an author. So I've just got to tell you that when you write from the heart, dictated from, to, from the Holy Spirit, and you are authentic and transparent with your reader, they will be your friend for life. And I mean, it's amazing to me when I meet people, they don't just have one of my books. They have several of my books. And I'm surprised by how many have all of my books, because now I've started a conversation, just like my mentor said, it's one long conversation. Now I continue to have conversation. So each book is, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing. And, and even though uh, some people would say that I have female content, a lot of men read my books. They learn about women that way. And then of course, 
they and they give them to their female friends. They go, child, you need to read this. It's so funny how many men buy my books for other women. The other thing is, I then did write some books for men because the men were getting jealous. And so I wanted to appeal to them. So this is not a male or female class. This is a class for anyone who wants to write. The same techniques, the same strategies, the same plans, the same processes work, whether you're a male or a female writer. The, the um, secret to getting your audience to become your friend, to become an avid reader of your books and champion your books and buy several books for other people is how you address your audience. So we're gonna talk about all those types of things. But as I can tell you as a witness of being here on my 42nd book, well, I'm actually getting ready to publish my 43rd book, Pray For Me, Y'all. I'm having a meeting with my prospective publishers on Thursday um, that are interested in my new manuscript. And I took, a, I took an eight year holiday from writing. And so, um, at the beginning of the year, I just felt a nudge from God to, to write again. And I said, I'm going to write this book. And so I actually wrote it faster than I've written other books in the past, simply because I just felt so compelled. And I felt that it was a topic that was relevant and that a lot of people were in the space that I was writing about. So we're going to talk about locating the need of your audience so that you're able to address um, what they need, you know, everybody's looking for information and you've got to find out what information they're looking for and how what you have to say matches with the information they need and then how to tailor it so that it is received um, and does the work that it's supposed to do in your readers. I'm going to hand this back over to um, Tega at this point because I think she has something she wants to interject at this point. Well, thank you so much for that great information. I know she told her story, but if you were listening very well, she gave great points, even in this class on how to get your book started and how to progress with writing the book. I just wanted to say a quick story about when I called her delectable. It's not my word. I was today, my friend texted me. She's like, oh my God, Tega, I know why you're so wise now. I'm like, hey, I'm wise. She said, yes, anytime you talk, you're just so wise. I'm like, why do you think I'm wise? And she says, because I'm reading your mom's book, Secret of an Irresistible Woman. It's just so juicy. It's so good. She's just so delectable. I was like, I'm stealing that. I'm going to use that. Thank you very much. I give you credit once. And after now, it's my word. So um, she just shared her success story. And like I said, this friend that I'm talking to you about, she is in Nigeria. She's been able to reach the world with her books. We get emails every day from people around the world. Um, we got an email one time that the book was even translated to different languages in Philippines. And I was like, oh my God, that is so cool. And um, the writer's course is not just going to be addressing why you need to write a book or how to write a book. It's a really structured class to even help you understand the business side of an author, how to, how to go through your contract, what to say yes to. If you want to be a self-published author, there are resources in the class to help you. If you want to be published by a publishing house, she's curated um, interviews with different good people, ghostwriters, publishers, editors, um, everything, everything. She just had, I think we have over 10 interviews with greatest parts that you will not um, what's the word I'm looking for? You cannot easily reach them to say, hey, you come talk to me or whatever. So it's really, it's a really well-rounded course and I encourage you to take the class. We're going to talk more about her success story and how she's been able to sustain and have longevity in the, in the, in the writing space because you hear about an author and they're like, whatever happens in her? She didn't write any more books or whatever. And then uh, I should also talk, touch a little bit about uh, the difference between a book or a journal because she's always saying people just have great ideas and then it's just going it's supposed to be a journal it's not supposed to be a book it's supposed to be for you and you alone um and i think the other problem that people also have when they want to write is they have so many stories they don't know which one to start with and then this is a great course that would help you get to that um i also want you to touch a little bit about um a structure of a book and how a book should go. I just want that to give you snippets of what is, is that how you say the word? Snip, snippet? Mm -hmm. uh, snippets, yes. The class, um, 
Go. Okay, thank you. Um, so I just want to play another short quick commercial and then I'm going to hand it back over to her to, to, to touch on these things that I have um, talked about. The opening line, it's all in the opening line. If I don't grab you in that first line, I've lost you forever. Okay, let's do this, let's do this. Michelle, why did you write that book? What were you thinking about when you wrote that book? for one person to write. Now it's your turn. I'm Dr. Michelle McKinney, I'm a best-selling author. I'm gonna show you how to become a best-selling author too. I'm gonna to share my keys to the purpose, the plan, the process, and publishing. Plus you'll gain amazing insights from experts in the field. From agents to publishers to editors, they'll share their secrets and everything you need to know to get you ready to become the best-selling author I know you are. The Right to Be Heard Masterclass is finally here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am so excited, okay, because um, in the, in, did you see the commercial I added where um, she's signing books to people? And for me, it's very... I don't know if it's strange because I always look at them strange. Like people walk up to her and you're like, <laughs> why are you crying? <laughs> it's always, I'm like, why are you crying? That's how deep writing is. I think writing is a very, very personal thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, 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 the, it's, it's a completely different experience. So I'm going to hand it back over to you. Yeah, she just said something very critical that sometimes I probably take for granted. And that is the power of what you write. I am overwhelmed when I run into people and I meet them for the first time and they burst into tears because it's just me writing a book in my head. But I don't know the power of that book to certain people that read it when they need that information and it actually becomes a light to them that turns on the light. I remember one day I was at Neiman Marcus in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'll never forget this, that I was in the shoe department and this woman came running over from the cosmetic department and she said, oh, are you Michelle McKinney Hammond? And I said, yes. And she said, oh my God, I read your book, What to Do Into Left Hand. You had secrets of a never system. And she had a whole list of them and she says, and look, and she threw out her hand and had this great big old diamond on her hand. And she said, this is because of you. I did everything you said. And I was like, I need to talk to Jesus about this. Where's my ring? You know, <laughs> but all of that to say is we don't know the power of what we write. And that's why I want to guide you through this so that your power is not misdirected because people are sponges for information. And you know that psychologically, the brain cannot separate fact from fiction. So you can write anything and it's received as reality. So what I wanna do is help you craft your message in such a way that it does the work you want it to do. You know, when God had the Bible dictated, it says that the word goes out and accomplishes what God sent it to do. And your book should also do that. So we're gonna talk a lot about the psychology behind what you're writing so that you become very keenly focused on how you tell your story. What do you want to accomplish? What are you trying to say? What is the point? What do you want your reader to take away? What do you want your reader to do with that information? All of these things are important when you're writing your book. Um, so this is why I created this class because like I said, I meet a lot of people who say they want to write a book, but they're really clueless to the process. They're clueless. They don't have a plan on how to write. And, and they're, just, they're just floating around in their story. So this is going to help you focus. And I help you with your format, even down to selecting your title. Every week when you do your homework, it's another building block for you to finish and complete your manuscript. Um, down to, and, and as Tega told you, we're going to have a lot of experts. There's going to be editors, publishers, agents, uh, PR people. So if, if you, um, there are three levels to the class. She'll take you through that in a minute. 
The basic will give you all the information for writing your book. Level two includes the experts and gives you all of the resources that come with that, as well as the information for self-publishing, as well as choosing a traditional publisher route. Both of those are routes that you have to consider. And again, they're based on what your goal is. Um, I always tell people if they're out and circulating on a speaker circuit, um, they can do well in self-publishing. If they're not, you need a publisher um, to just have that machine behind you to get your books out. That's how I've been able to have books written in foreign languages, um, the Philippines and French and Spanish uh, in Brazil, uh, South America. Um, you know, they've been able to reach out to other publishers that then take those books and translate them into other languages. So you kind of have to make a decision on if it's just money for you or is it reach? But we get into all those things in the class so that you can carefully um, have a strategy for what exactly you want to do with your book, who you want it to reach. Other than that, I'm going to help you build from your title to your table of contents to working on your proposal. Now, that proposal isn't just to sell your book. That proposal is going to become the guidepost for how you write your book. I love doing the proposal because in the proposal, I, I have my title. I have my uh, table of contents. I write a description of every single chapter. I name my chapters. And so that gives me my, my outline that I then go back and fill in. A lot of people get stuck because they're just writing. But if you've carefully mapped out your book before you start, you'll know where you're going next and it will help you and, and compel you to continue moving through it. Do you get writer's block sometimes? Sure you do. Um, it could be, you could get distracted by life. You might not have everything that you want to say yet um, in, in your uh, head. And so it's like meditating. Uh, sometimes it takes me about, a couple of weeks to write a chapter. It's all in my head for a while. I'm chewing on it. I'm, I'm rolling it over. I'm coming up with the stories that I want to interject to illustrate my points. Um, I'm getting more points. And sometimes life is happening around me that's adding to that chapter. It's been amazing that when you're writing, literally God makes you live through your chapter. And so things will come to you within your week that you go, ah, this is perfect for me to illustrate in my chapter. Or you get a new revelation that week because of an experience that you had. All of these things are things that you've got to be open to and sensitive to when you're writing your book for it to become a solid piece of a, and a great manuscript that's going to help a lot of people. Because we all want to help people, right? Who's on here that's writing because they want to help somebody? Yes. So we want to help people and, and we want to do it the right way. So there have been a lot of things that I've learned along the way about structuring my story. I had one manuscript I was really, really proud of, and I sent it to my editor. And uh, she's actually one of the experts that um, you'll get to in, have information from. And she said, um, I think this book needs to be restructured. And I, I, my hair was on fire immediately. Ooh, cause you know, you resist changes. What are you saying about my baby? You want to rearrange its face? Oh my goodness, is it ugly? You know, and she's like, no, the content is good but I just feel it needs a different structure. And so she was able to help me tear my book apart. I mean, literally I tore the, the chapters apart and had to put them, she kind of suggested how I would structure it. And then I had to go back in and fill in. And you know what? It's one of the best books I've written. And how many lessons did I learn that made me a great writer, a better writer from working with that editor? She was soft-spoken. She was not condescending. So I didn't feel intimidated. Um, but it really was amazing how she guided me through the process. And I always say I'm a better writer today because of Erin Healy, who's an amazing writer and editor in her own right. So there are lots of things that you're going to learn about yourself, about your disposition, uh, about your temperament as you begin to write. Writing is a very isolated um, process. It's lonely. You know, because you got you to shut out all the distractions. So we talk about your workspace. We talk about how to cut down on distractions. Oh, yes, we go in, in every area in this class. 
because I want to help you finish your book. How many people on this call want to not just start a book, but finish the book? Let me see your hands um, being raised or say in the chat, that's me. Yes, I want to finish my book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are secrets. Even as a self-publisher, um, I bought back the rights to one of my books last year and, um, and re re-released it on Amazon and it was a number one uh, bestseller. So there are ways to, to get it done either way. And that's what I want to help you accomplish. Tega, perhaps you want to take them through um, what the course contains by showing them um, what will be in it. Okay. Um... And the levels. So we have the early bird. So I'm so sorry. We and have we have extended the early bird because the early bird special ended September 30th, but I've extended it for this weekend. Okay. Tega? I'm sorry, my internet okay. was lagging. Because you look uh, frozen. Can you, can you hear me? Okay, now. There it is. Yes. Okay. Um, so we have the basic. The basic, yeah, it has the eight-week video course and four interactive masterclass session to review the work you have done in, in the class. And then it comes with a workbook too. The workbook has all the information, not just, it has resources that you can use to make the writing process easy for you and smooth. So that's the basic that we have there. And then we have the next level we have is the intermediate. And you can always upgrade as you go. Maybe if you started with the basic, maybe you felt like you just needed the basic. And then as you started, because you, you felt like you need more, you feel like you need more, you can always up upgrade to the intermediate level, which mm -hmm. has a 10 week video course. So this one has have more videos, more lessons. It has um, more master classes, more one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Michelle to help you with the book. It has a work book and you also have have the excuse me advice from the expert that we talked about the pr uh people the editors the publishers all of that that is in the intermediate level and then we have the advanced the advanced uh have everything including personal review and input on the proposal or the first chapter of your book so you can decide if you want dr michelle to help you with your proposal or help you with the first chapter of your book. So that's the advanced course. It has all the other ones that have listed, including that one. And then we have the graduate course. We have everything, including book cover design. Okay, so it would help you design your book cover and get you that best-selling book cover and make you be a bestseller. So that's the level of the, of the master classes that we have. And like she said, we have, Uh oh, your internet. Can you hear me? Yeah. My internet is now. Yeah. Now you're back. Okay, you hear me now. Yes. Okay, so we so we've extended that. Uh, people are already registering. I just wanted to say this here real quick that this is not like the other classes that we've had. Okay, this is a very specific class, and we are trying to make it as intimate as possible so the slot is very very limited the numbers that we have agreed to take for this class is very 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 small so the window for you to register if you really want to take this class it's now so sign up now like i said because um, writing is very personal she wants dr michelle wants to have the opportunity to take to you know pour pay attention to every single person i'm frozen again or you can hear me no, no, no. I was just agreeing with you that the reason we're keeping okay. the class smaller as a, as a class is because I want to be very hands on. I want to hear from every student during the master class and be able to give feedback and, and take a look at what you're doing. Um, so I can't do that if it's a large, massive class. So we have a few slots left, and that's why we're just opening up tonight um, and, and allowing uh, the early bird special to uh, continue for the weekend until tomorrow. Uh, I'm giving you overnight to make your decision, but you should make your decision tonight because after we hit our goal of the number that we have, we will be um, shutting it down. Yes, go ahead. Chaya. Yes, um, so okay. my internet is good because I can hear you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, I wanted to also play a snippet of uh, one of the experts we have in the class. I played something she said in the last one that we had, uh, the, the editor that she's talking about, Erin Healy, which is she's very good. And I wanted to play a snippet for you guys to hear what you'd be expecting from the class. Let me just give you some of the names of the of the people in the class. We have Teresa Harrison, if you know who she is. She was the founder and publisher of Gospel Today magazine. We have um, Katara. Katara is a great editor. We have Don, Don Shirt. Is that how you say the name? We have um, Ben Wolf. We have so many great people. If you know anything in the in the author space, we have we have great authors that is there to help you. We also have Pam Perry. She's a great uh, PR person that can help you. And then we also, if you sign up between today and tomorrow, if you don't, okay, let me just I'm say this here. I am a certified digital marketer. So I know a lot about the social media life. And in today's world, I was going to ask that question in the end, but in today's world of publishing, the first thing they ask you, even in the Christian space, if you want to write something that is in the religious space, they ask, what's your numbers? That's the first question they ask you. Well, what's her number? So I'm like, man, when she started writing the book, there was no, what's your numbers? Don't we have faith? But no, they ask you, what is your numbers? So if you sign up between today and tomorrow, I would have a 30 minute session with you on social media to help you grow your social media and make you increase your numbers on social media because you would definitely need that when you are writing and publishing your book so yeah that's the treats that we have for this session if you sign up between today and tomorrow in any of the levels you'd have a 30 minutes consultation with me to help you with your social media accounts uh, before we continue i want to play a short message from harry erin healy now let's talk about those draft stages so that they know what to expect within the process. Yeah. You know, a lot of writers now are writing what they call zero drafts, which is um, permission to just write terribly, to not worry about the quality, to not spend any time at all stressing about whether the book is good and functions as a book. The goal of a zero draft is simply to get your ideas out of here and onto your paper so that um, then you can organize them. Once you have words on the page, you're, you're so much farther ahead than you'd be um, when you're just thinking about book ideas. That process is where you actually take that first step of going, do I even have a book here or do I just have an article? Do I just have a blog, you know? Um, so, so I'm usually not involved at that stage, although sometimes people hire me just to kick around ideas. I do some coaching. So um, then they'll write the first draft. They'll try to, to organize that material into something that's suitable for the format they're writing, whether it's a novel or um, a nonfiction book or a memoir. They all have very different structures and different techniques they use. Um, and what I tell writers is that you really want to be a student, a self-taught student of your own craft as much as possible before you go spend money on a professional editor. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one is that, you know, if you're going to spend your money buying books on the craft of writing, being a good student of your own genre, your own category, um, and going to classes, taking workshops like yours, Michelle, going to writers' conferences, that is money much better spent for you to take your work as far as you can on your own before you bring in somebody who's going to charge you a much steeper fee um, because you're paying for time, really time and expertise. Um, so take it as far as you absolutely can on your own before you bring someone like me in. You're, you're, you'll just be happier with how you spend your money. Well, la, that's it. There are more that she said. It's it's very in depth as the conversation and, and and as the interview went with that one. So we are almost rounding up. I just want to use um, this opportunity. If you have questions, you can send them. You can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand, and we can um, have you ask your question on Facebook too. If you have questions, you can also put them in the chat, and we would ask her. The question should be related to writing, please. 
So if you have questions mm -hmm. before I hand it back to her, you can just raise your hand or put them in the chat. Um, Tega, can you put the link in the chat for um, them to be able to sign up? Um, also, Aaron, that's the Aaron that I was talking about that definitely made me a better writer. Um, so what she's basically saying is invest in yourself first and, and get most of the work done before you start hiring editors and all of that, because that does become um, a lot pricier. They charge, you know, by word count or page count. Um, and that can be a process of depending on how much you need to rewrite or reposition your manuscript. So I'm trying to help you shortcut all of that by being able to focus and have a streamlined um, understanding of how to write your book and help guide you through that. Uh, there are a couple of things. Like I said, the cover is important. Your first chapter is probably your first, your first sentence after the title is one of the most important things because it's going to make a person decide if they're going to continue reading or not. I think there's one book that started off very slowly that I persisted on only because everyone said how amazing it was. And I was trying to get to the amazing part. And it took like the first chapter and then it took off because the book was giving all this background and build up. And I was kind of like, eh. and I probably would not have continued going through it if other people had not praised it highly. So we don't want that to be your experience. We want you to hit the ground running and have things that grab your reader from beginning to end, okay? Um, someone's asking if they can take the course at another time. I'm going to be doing this once a year. So you will have to wait for an entire year to get it again or I might offer it on a do it on your own basis later in the year after I've finished helping, but it's much better when you can attend the master classes and get that feedback. That's going to be very important um, in your process of writing your book. And it's going to give you the, the impetus you need to continue moving forward because you'll feel more equipped and more empowered and more in control of doing what you're doing. I think that sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, just my people are for lack of knowledge, they also don't uh, finish for lack of knowledge because you get lost in the process and you don't know how to complete it. So I'm arming you with an empowerment to finish what you start. How do you pick a topic for your book? <laughs> That's part of the question in the class, um, but I will say, What's your greatest struggle? What's your greatest passion? What's the thing that makes you angry? What's the thing that makes you sad? What's the thing that makes you say somebody needs to do something about that? Well, that somebody is usually you because it's not bothering everybody else around you, but it's bothering you. So all of those things are hints to the topic that you need to address. Sometimes when you pick what, you, what you're writing in a book, it comes from your own experience, something that you learn that you'd like others to know. So there are various and vast reasons that we write books and, and, and various ways to select a topic, but the topic chooses you, I would say. Um, let me see, who else? Okay, all right. Well, Jennifer, you can always contact Tega and work things out with her um, because we would love for you to be able to take the class. Um, any other questions? I'm putting my email in the chat so um, you can always send me a message if you need to. I'm going through the other social media platforms. Okay. Um, the cost of the course in Canadian dollars, I think you would have to do the calculator because I don't know what the exchange rate is at this point. I do believe that we have offered an option to break up the payments. Um, so you can check that out when you go online. The class begins October 10th. And as I said, um, 
you are doing the class at your own leisure within the week. And every two weeks, there's a master class. So you will um, have a calendar of when that happens and what time. And you will also get reminders in your email when it's time for master class. But um, you, you will have to. What I Go ahead. Somebody asks, what are your expectations of the students? Um, <clears throat> what are your expectations for yourself? I am here to help you fulfill your expectations of yourself. Um, I hope that the information I give you will empower you to write your book, to start it and not just start it, but finish it and finish it well, and also be armed with enough information to make intelligent choices as to if you're going to self-publish or pursue a traditional publisher and know what to do with that publisher. Um, also know um, how to market your book because publishers don't do all the work for you anymore. So if you wanna have a success, there are certain things you need to know about how to brand yourself and how to do your social media and how to um, launch your book. All of these things are things that are covered in the course so that you are a success. So my expectation of my students is that they will become successful, best-selling authors. If, 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 you know, if you really want me to know, to, to tell you the truth, but that's up to you. I can only give you all the tools and then it's up to you. The homework is helping you write your book. So literally during this class, you will begin to write your book. If you've already started writing it and you've gotten stuck, Hopefully, I will empower you to finish the process and also re-examine what you've written so far to see if you need to fix anything. So yes, you literally are going to start writing your book on this class, and I am going to be helping you fine-tune it so that you can continue it after the class. Um, how do you know when it's time to seek an editor? All of that is in the class, um, but you, you seek an editor when you're finished with your manuscript. Um, the, unless you want them to help you write the book, there is such a thing called ghostwriters you can hire. Um, there are different ways that editors work, and all of that is also included in the class so that you make an educated choice on how to choose an editor, know when to uh, choose an editor, and how to work with that editor. Um, is this class for any genre of book? Yes, basically. Um, I do do an extra bonus class if you are interested in uh, writing a novel versus self-help. Um, so that is also included. I've written two novels. I will confess that I'm not a specialist on novels, but my two novels did well. So I can share what I learned on that and just some basic rules for writing novels. Uh, when I wrote my first novel, again, Aaron's was like, well, which person are we writing this book? And I was like, person, what are you talking about, girl? I'm just writing a book. <laughs> So I had to go back and fix the viewpoint of my book. So that was priceless information for me um, that I'm actually getting ready to um, work on a television series based on my novels. So, you know, the, the book, the life of your book can be extended in so many different ways if it's written well. Yeah, somebody asks, I have many ideas for a book. How do you narrow it down to one topic? Will that top, will it be addressed in the in the master class? Yes, again? definitely. It will definitely be addressed in the class. Um, when do you expect the class to end? The class is either six weeks, eight weeks, or 10 weeks, depending on the level of the class that you choose. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know, my internet went out, but then how the MMH Academy works is we run every master class once every year. So mm -hmm. the class will come up again next year. I don't know if you said that already. Yes. Or we can make an option for you to take the class on your own without the live master class session. But I encourage you to take it now um, and get into the live master class session so you'd have one-on-one -on -one advice from the great one of the greatest if i you you probably are the first black woman to become mainstream in 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 the writing space so um take the class now guys if you can't do it don't 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 overthink it just take the class and get your yeah. book out and into the hands of the people that you're trying to reach so well, just remember this is an investment in you um 
If this is something that you've been having in your heart for a long time, um, there's no better time than now to begin the process. If not now, when? You know, you can put it off for another year and another year, and you might have information that someone's looking for right now. I always say that, you know, someone's looking for you. You're looking for what you should be doing, and they're looking for you. So I'm here to help you settle all those questions and um, make a decision and help you get started. We're going to pick your title. We're going to help you do your, your outline. You're going to do your table of contents. We're going to talk about your um, descriptions of your chapters and, and get you focused so that you literally have a map that will help you finish your book. And then there's experts to help you. And uh, there's even sources to help you self-publish. Um, and we can help you with that as well. So it's up to you. I have issued the invitation and I hope that you will accept because I am excited to do the work with you. I love doing this kind of stuff. I love hearing other people's ideas and saying, now, if you just did this and if you did that, what about this? And just really helping you get focused and be your best self. So that's my invitation to you. Um, did we share the link, Tags? Yes. For them to sign up? Um, I, I, I shared the link in the chat i also put it on if you're on youtube i put it there if you're on facebook twitter wherever you are mm -hmm. i have shared the link and from tomorrow i'll also share more information on her social media platforms about the class just to say again if you sign up between today and tomorrow you get a 30 minutes coaching coaching session with me on social media and how to brand yourself on social media how to find that voice how to master mm -hmm. the voice and how to brand it i will take you through all of that for social media so there you have it today on the right to be headmaster class i hope you learned something if you if you learned something from this session just give me hey hey let me hear you say hey hey <laughs> all right uh, um, is that all yes i think that's it so I will look forward to when you go to um, the um, the website, you will see the information on payment plan as well as what it costs. So um, all of that is there. Um, let's do before this. We, mother, before we forget, um, we, we talked about giving like for, with the other courses, you know, we always try to help people. We know that there are some of you that truly, truly cannot afford if you can afford this i send me email my village people will see it i'm just kidding but if you cannot truly afford this class uh, can you tell them what you have we have two there? scholarships positions open um, but you have to really give us a case for you doing that scholarship because it really needs to go to someone who really really needs the scholarship if you can do it pay for the class you know why you're going to appreciate it more. Um, and, and there's something about when you invest, uh, then you follow through. Usually if it's free, then you, uh, you know, you can take it or leave it. So it's really important that what that does is it lets you know to yourself that you are serious about doing this. Okay. So um, that is open for those who really, really need a scholarship. And I've already invited some other people. So whoever has the best case for the scholarship will get those two scholarships. I, okay. I put my email in chat and you can send me that email and we would review it. Well, that's all we have for today, ma'am. Do you have any other thing you want to say? I'm ready to do it. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let me see in the chat if you're ready. All right. Rodney's ready. I can't wait. Okay, who else did I see? Couple people were ready. Yes, yes, I'm seeing everybody's ready. Let's do this, Kimberly. Let's do it, Maureen. Let's do it, Lynette. Let's do this class together. It's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be fun. It is gonna be fun, trust me, okay? We're gonna have fun in the process, okay? Cause I'm a happy sanguine. And if it's not fun, I don't wanna do it. So <laughs> it has to be fun too. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk into writing I, when she was talking and we were recording the class i was always cutting her in the middle and i'm like wait well, what does that mean you have to explain that and she's like yes yes it's true i have to make this i have to explain this and i'm like wow i thought writing was just 
Ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot. And then after you write your book, the process of getting the book out there, that is another ball game altogether. And that's all the information is there for you to do this. Rodney, I can't wait to see you in the class because Rodney has already taken the class. You see how small the number is that I know everybody who have taken the class. I know all <laughs> the that's how tiny. That's this is this this small that we are taking for the class. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. And if you're going to take the class, we will see you there. It's going to be an yes. exciting time. I'm ready to do the work. We got one more week left, so I'll see you. You'll be getting a notice as to when the class starts, and I'll probably set up a Zoom just, just to introduce you to the course, and we'll be off and running, okay? God bless. And one in the class. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the class. I'm ready to <laughs> so we're going to go. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. <laughs>